right. Well, welcome back. And I do mean welcome back to the CNC podcast. It's been quite some time since we've had an opportunity to sit down and record one of these episodes, but we're so thankful to, to have found a, an opportunity to sit down together. A little summer break. Yeah, a little summer break. We'll, we'll call it that. And um, I'm especially thrilled uh, this, this afternoon to be hosting uh, my dad, who's joining us to talk about um, shepherding our children's hearts. So Pastor Mark here and uh, John Montoya as your host and Carlos Montoya, who is one of our supported missionaries from Calvary Memorial Church and, and as I mentioned, my dad. So just so thankful to have you brothers and to be able to explore this subject, shepherding our children's hearts, uh, something that is uh, fresh on my mind, uh, well, every day, obviously, but uh, I have a three-year-old at home, a one-year-old, and, and an 11-day-old, which is why my dad is here, obviously, not, not, not to see me, but, um, but as I was doing some quick, some quick math before we hit record here, and um, there, between the two of you, there's 13 kids and 57 years of parenting. Wow. And and by God's grace, uh, you've you've uh, been faithful these years. We pray for you to continue being faithful. But I've I've learned so much from both of you, and and I have no doubt that our conversation right now will be just one more deposit in that learning from from you, brother. So thankful. So the first the first question I just wanted to sort of tee up for you and let you all discuss, and maybe we'll start start with you, uh, Daddy. And it would be this question: What what were or what are just some foundational convictions that controlled your heart um, for your parenting. Hmm. Well, first of all, just happy to be here with uh, you all. It's uh, it's just always a joy to be here with Pastor Amen. Mark and uh, someday Pastor Jonathan Montoya. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming, you know. <laughs> and uh, it is it is it is great to be able to just. Um, rub shoulders with you guys. I've learned so much uh, from both of you, really. Yeah. Um, and so it's really good. You know, as I think about just foundational convictions, I think that's a good way of, of putting it. Uh, there's so many things that come to mind. But, um, you know, one, one thing, one thing that comes to mind as obviously you have two parents, um, it, it just to realize this is not my thing. This is God's thing. This is mm. God's the one who has designed the family. God's the one who has designed how the family should uh, be be carried out, and um, and so uh, you know, just okay. If, if this is if this is a God thing, then I need to I need to understand that, and I I need to understand what God says about this. Amen. There isn't there isn't. I don't have to go outside of Scripture. I can go to Scripture and find out exactly uh, what is it that He He wants from from us, you know. And um, so I think that's foundational. Uh, and obviously, that implies that I I need to have a relationship with God. I need to have my relationship with God through Christ. And um, and obviously, it is. The ideal situation, if both of them, both your the husband and wife, have a relationship with Christ, I know there are situations right. where that isn't the case, but if both of them are, I mean, you're you're just set. I mean, you've got the the the, the supernatural manual for parenting in your hands in Scripture, okay. and so that's that's a that's a huge foundational you know um, conviction. Scripture is going to be my guide. Scripture is going to be my mandate mm. for for this. You know. And then just another one. I, I have several, but I, I want others to contribute as well. But one of them is just to be in harmony with your your wife. Mm-hmm. You know, just to be in harmony with your wife, and just and harmony happens again as you understand you, that as or the husband as his role and the wife and mother as her role, and you know, studying that out. Ephesians five and First Peter three mm-hmm. and you know, Colossians. And so, and so just understanding your roles and, and, and carrying out your roles joyfully, mm. joyfully. And I say it that way because you don't, I, I really do believe that has an impact on the children. Mm-hmm. You know, if the children see that you're carrying out your roles, but you're frustrated and you're, you know, I, I just got to do it this way or whatever. No, but you are joyfully carrying out God's role. 
So, um, and then another conviction, honestly, has to do, kind of ties with that second one, is seeing that really the husband-wife relationship is priority mm -hmm. over even the parent-child relationship. Mm -hmm. And that they see that, that, you know, that daddy loves mommy and mommy loves daddy. And, um, and obviously there's love for the children and, and the Lord has us carrying out in instructions to to lead them and everything but uh, but they they need to understand mm. there's a huge bond between mommy and daddy that nobody's going to break <laughs> so far yeah. so. and i want to come back to something you said in a minute just about the the importance of harmony within the marriage but pastor mark foundational convictions that maybe you formulated or as you look back, you're like, yes, these were the convictions that, that have continued to control my heart. Yeah, to, to, uh, to kind of jump on that, that first one you mentioned, you know, what we're talking about there is the authority mm. and the sufficiency of Scripture. Exactly. Again, yeah. you know, God's Word, we are under God's Word, and the Scriptures are enough. So there is to be dug into and studied and understood what does the scripture say about like you're saying manhood and womanhood and marriage and that priority of marriage and how that works itself out into all of relationships how do we do relationships how do we model communication in our marriage how does that then spill over into the way that we communicate with our kids and then what is the what is the framework that is uh given in scripture for our role in relationship with our kids and mm -hmm. and and so before God, we're charged with the stewardship, the gift, the trust, the joy mm -hmm. of children. And so defining children as a gift from the Lord, as a heritage, Psalm 127, That's right. right? And they're a stewardship, so they're entrusted to us, and we are commanded by God, here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Here's what's important. Here are your priorities. And so we're, we're again, always... If we're under Christ, like you're saying, uh, then we're we're slaves of Christ. Mm -hmm. We want to obey the Master because we trust Him and we joyfully do that because He's good. He loves us. He's modeling for us loving fatherhood, and so we want to pass that on. We want to display mm -hmm. that, and so that relationship and that sufficiency and authority of Scripture guides that, and then that that moves us in the the harmony mm -hmm. because then it's like. This is not like the way my parents did it and the way your parents did it. It's not the way we see, you know, other people doing it. It's what does the scripture say? Mm -hmm. And and that that the sufficiency of scripture puts puts boundaries on that. And it and it guides, okay, here's what is most important. Here's, you know, Ephesians 6. Here's you must be the authority mm -hmm. as parents. You're the authority. And God gave them to you. He didn't give them to the state or the government. He didn't give them to anybody. He gave them to you. You're, mm -hmm. you're in charge. You're tr entrusted with them. Right. And you're to train them to obey. The command for them is to obey, to honor. And so you're to train them in that. You're to bring them up. And so very simply frames it up. And then there's a million applications of that. And there's also a lot of ways you can get tempted to add to the Scripture or take away from the scripture, be twisted from the scripture, and those things will get in the way. Mm -hmm. You'll get your trust off that, oh, if I just follow this system, then this system is going to fix my kids. It's going to produce the right things for my kids. Or if I just mm -hmm. have, you know, have them chase the best of academics or athletics or whatever else, it's going to make them successful in the world. And where did God tell you to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he told you. So that can be fine. That can be fine to do. But what is the priority? And, and so it just, it hems you in and it, it hems us in, in a way that like gives us, here's what you must do. Now you can, there are other things you can do. There are ways you can apply that, but here's what is most central. And I think that was just that. I think we, we attempted, I should say, <laughs> we still are attempting mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. to, to live by that governance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that shapes our harmony in our marriage, in the way that we approach parenting. And then it shapes also what the issues are with the kids. Mm -hmm. Because what are the issues with the kids? Their sin in relationship with God. 
obedience to us is really about relationship with God. Mm-hmm. It's really about reconciliation with God, and it shapes it all to be the law that brings to the gospel, and the gospel is the way that you are changed. And so it always is an evangelism discussion. It always is a pursuit of the heart. And so that just frames it up for us in those ways. And I think that the third uh, thing I might add to those is that um, salvation is from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so exactly, we're desperate to pray. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I want to piggyback on something you said Mark, um, the sufficiency. S- su- sufficiency of Scripture is, is universal. It's, it's transcendent culture and time. I mean, it's not like a situation where, okay, you know, in Paul's time it was sufficient, but now we need other things. It's gotten complicated. Society's gotten complicated, but it isn't. It, it is sufficient equally today as it was then. And, and that is, that's very comforting. Oh, That's very yeah. comforting. And I, yeah. and I just taught a class on, on parenting. And one thing, um, there's, there's a couple of things that kind of come out of, implications about come out of that. One is some people might teach a class on parenting, calling it how to raise godly children. I think that's wrong. Um, there's no way we can raise godly children. <laughs> um, that's, that's God's work. Like you're saying the, the salvation is from the Lord. Yeah. But I think a better title would be how to be godly parents in raising your children. Mm. Yeah, you know, uh, you need to, and, and the way to do that is you rely on the sufficiency of Scripture. And I remember saying this in, in one of my classes: is you know, as we know, society is attacking the family. I mean, it is it is rampant, it's aggressive, it is so visible. Um, and you know, we don't have to get into all the ills of society, but I say, you know, our greatest struggle isn't what society is doing to the family. Our greatest struggle in raising our children, it aren't the ills of society. Our greatest struggle is our own sin and not relying on the sufficiency of Scripture. Mm-hmm. So we go to Scripture and say, okay, society is doing all this, but if we wow. just dig into what Scripture says, okay, we're going we're gonna to do it this way. I don't care what society is saying. Yeah. Obviously, like you were saying, million applications, you might have to apply in different ways things, but it, it's going to have to be fed off of the sufficiency of Scripture. And so that's been, that, that's very helpful, you know, yeah. to just to stand firm in that. And that makes us just understand our role. Yeah. And that's exactly. why we pray. Yeah, Because exactly. our, our, our role is to, is to try to be faithful. We exactly. want to be godly parents, like you said. That, that, that's the title. That's the goal. Yeah. We just want to be faithful. And it, it is always God's grace that He would save anybody. Right. And, and he is so kind yeah. and gracious to use us and then to give us the joy of seeing him work, whether right. that's in, in, right. in anybody's life, really, exactly. but in our, especially in our children's lives. When we see him work, it's just, wow, thank you. It's not because I did this right. It's not because right. I'm so worthy as a parent. Exactly. My program for parenting is the best. Right. Um, and so, exactly. you know, I think that's that's really a fundamental conviction to go back to the way you phrased that question is that we would always understand and that young parents would understand do not approach parenting like I just want to get all the everything right mm. and I want to cross all the T's and I want to dot all the I's because I want to produce godly children mm-hmm. I want to to do everything right no I want God to be gracious mm-hmm. and, think- and save my kids by his grace and use mm-hmm. Use my feeble, la- feeble attempts, <laughs> but my labors to be yeah. faithful. Yeah. But they're going to be shot through with our own sin. Yeah. Exactly. And so to, to know that, yeah. not to be content to sin, but to know my, my, I'm, I'm not the production factory. Right. right. I think it's something that so, was so pivotal for me is what both of you have just said, but it was understanding the difference between what is my responsibility as a parent and what is my desire. My desire is their salvation. And that is no doubt the greatest burden. It's going to be the thing that shows up the most in my prayers. Like you were saying, I'm desperately praying, oh God, be merciful to save their souls. But to to sort of make that distinction between, okay, that's my desire and greatest desire probably in this life greatest burden but my responsibility is not to save them it's to be faithful 
my responsibility is to faithfully set the gospel before them and then desperately pray like crazy that God would work and, and that God, God would be kind to, to bless his. Yeah, that reminds me of a quote from Augustine's mother. She said, I labored hard for the first birth of my child mm. and I labor even harder mm. for the second birth of my yeah. children. Yep. You know, by praying and just Amen. crying out the Lord. That's good. That's good. I want to, I want to come back to one thing that um, you were saying in your, in your first comment there, just about unity in the marriage. And really think about, as you guys think about your years of parenting and marriage, ways that you encouraged the heart of your wife after she's, she's the real, you, you just brought up Augustine's mother. It is our wives, it's the mothers who are the ones that are in the trenches mm -hmm. facing mm -hmm. the, the real shepherding challenges day by day. And, and we, we certainly bear the, the mantle of leadership as, as husbands and fathers. How do you, you come home at the end of the day or what are those ways, just very practically, brothers, that you encouraged the hearts of your wives yeah. Uh, over the long haul of parenting. I think you used the right word, <clears throat> encourage. A, a husband definitely needs to be an encourager. Mm. Uh, you're, you're right. The, 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 the wife, the mother is in the trenches. And when you come home, you haven't been through it. You know, you haven't been through it. It's, uh, uh, they, they've been in the battlefield. You know, they, their, their ministry to the children is one of the most hostile ministries <laughs> out there, you know, until so you come in and... And, and you do need to be so, so encouraging. And, and you know, they, they'll, they'll kind of say, it's been the worst day of my life, you know, <laughs> and it, I, I just can't move on anymore. And, and so... Just, just to be clear, every mother has felt that way at some point. Oh, though. yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, definitely. So if you're listening to this and you yeah, think... Exactly. Oh, wait. Lori Montoya. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it can't be. She's too sweet to ever say such a thing. I always thought everybody. that she was like everybody. Like she but, is kind of above every. <laughs> 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 but um, that's, that's just reality. But, you know, I think I mean, part that's, of it. Part that's of what it. keeps us desperate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's part yeah. of God's wisdom in keeping right. us right. a desperate and b in the end grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grateful. And you know, a lot of times their discouragement isn't the whining and the screaming of the children. Their discouragement is I dealt with it wrong. Mm -hmm. I got frustrated. I got angry. I got, you know, stuff like that. And I'm, I'm just so discouraged. Why can't I do this? Mm -hmm. You know? And so, and, and just, just coming alongside and say, Hey, you know, the Lord is such a gracious God and, and all that. And, and, and also understand that, you know, you're a sinner as well. You know, we're, we're sinners as well. And saying, you know, you're you're doing an incredible. I don't think I could do this. You know, <laughs> stay at home all day with 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 the children like this. That that is an amazing gift mm -hmm. that mothers have. You know, but I think a lot of times what happens is they're going through this hostility, and and a lot of times it produces what we would call proverbially the perspective of the half empty cup. You know, mm -hmm. and so you really need to encourage them to see the half full cup. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, <laughs> one, one thing is, you know, honey, you did good today. You're still alive. You know, <laughs> you know? they did not kill you, you know, <laughs> so, so you, you, you kept them alive and you're still alive. So that's part of that half full cup, you know, and also even, even if you're, if you're, you know, uh, uh, teaching them scripture giving them, and they're not listening to them, but you are, you are teaching scripture and it'll come back. That scripture right. will come back to them. So right. Maybe right now, like it says in Hebrews 12, 11, I think it is, you know, this one right now, you know, doesn't seem joyful, but in, you know, in, in the future, it'll, it'll produce its fruit. You just stick to it, stick to it. And, um, and just really do be, be a, an encourager mm -hmm. to them and, and to see, kind of get out of the water and say, okay, you know, uh, you're doing good. You're doing okay. Gain some altitude and, yeah, exactly. and look at it. Any practical encouragements, Pastor Mark? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that is huge. The sort of half full perspective of, and, and as, as your children age and mm. but you, to be able to look back at, with perspective mm -hmm. and go, you, you do remember that like we thought that we would never have potty trained children. <laughs> exactly. You, you do remember that we thought that 
they'd never learn to read. They would never learn to do math or they would never learn to obey, brush their teeth, you know, or they they never learn to whatever, fill in the blank as they get older, right? And to go, you know, praise God. Mm. Look at look at he's carried us and and he has done these good things and and we're grateful. Mm. And so let's stop and just be thankful. Like you're saying, be mm. thankful, be encouraged in that way. Um but then as well, I think it's helpful uh, as an encourager to her to um, that, you know, parent, parents are entrusted with this authority over children and she's on the front line there and you come in and you better be on the front line yeah. with her. That's good. Yeah. You better not take, take over. You better not be just all fun and games. Mm-hmm. And it's fun now for you. You better come in and and have an exercise of clarity and authority and, and where there's been uh, sin against mom, like to go and say, that is not okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not okay with dad. That's right. not okay with God ultimately. Right. And, and so that she knows you're unified. The kids know mm-hmm. you're unified. And, and it's also clear, obviously, God made men and women different. We have to say that today. God made men bigger, our voices mm-hmm. deeper. Exactly. You can think of, you can watch the way kids respond when there's a man with yeah. a crowd of 20 kids and he says, okay, everybody quiet. And a woman, you know, there's just a, there's a different level of right. that deeper voice or that louder voice can, you know. And so obviously, typically as well, larger we are. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to say, hey, we don't treat mom like that mm. and to point out what a gift she is and the sacrifice that she's making mm-hmm. to serve mm. the children and to love them and all that she's doing and the priorities that the scripture gives us and to think that in the in our world today especially that you have a mom it's devoted mm. to your life mm. she yep. gives herself every day to pour mm. herself out for you it's huge right. not as a guilt trip right but as a yeah. Praise God. What a blessing. We want to honor her. Yeah. And I want to honor her. And I want you to honor her. I want you to be thankful. Right. And I want you to realize you want to treat that with great mm. respect. Right. And you want to care for her. And like of all the people in the world that you should think, I want to obey her. Mm-hmm. I want to honor her. Yeah. You know, and so encouraging in that way. And so the, the, the grievousness of sin against, um, parents but especially a mom is is in that way just to be weighed out and and that that's not in in the way to take that from any kind of a oh poor thing now let me guilt you into feeling bad for Mm -hmm. sinning against your mom is just think that's a reflection of god's kindness to you Mm -hmm. here god has given this and when we talk about god and and god's goodness and God's direction for your life and God's law that you're sinning against him as, as this good and loving maker. Oh, why would he accept you? Right. Because of his son, because of Jesus. And there's the gospel again. And so like, then it's not a manipulative thing about mom. It's a right clarity of the roles, clarity of what he's honored and then clarity of who, how to get right with God. Right. I think, I think piggybacking on that, it's uh of encouraging and all <clears throat> you mentioned it you, you come in and you're and and she needs to realize that you're on her team yes. she's on your team you know and that that you're not coming in and say okay you know you just continue and do your thing i'm gonna go do my thing no you're coming in here and we're gonna do this project together you know one thing is uh, that and 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 be proactive it which will require sacrifice sacrifice right. of your comfort sacrifice of some things that maybe you were looking forward to <laughs> that evening okay no i this is priority you know and i think another thing that i think is very 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 important sometimes the the, the wife feels discouraged because she's comparing herself to other parents oh yeah and you just have to just tear that down no, this is this is our family. Or you know. and, and by related to that, not just to other parents, but 
their your kids to other kids. And your kids to other so kids. So exactly. Like, but the results aren't right. here right now. Right. And oh exactly. me. Yeah. So not just that comparison of parents, exactly. comparison of kids. Mm-hmm. Right. Go ahead. So if, if 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 the husband can help her say, you know, hey, this is unfair. this is this is what God has given us, and let's be joyful, yeah. you know, uh, with with this personality of the child that we have, you know, and this is <laughs> this is ours. God's God's great gift included this personality, and so let's look at it as an opportunity, you know, to see how God will be glorified uh, through this, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's very important. That's helpful, encouraging, and, and convicting. And if I can sort of just summarize in, in two key words what you both just said, it would be that, that a father must be involved and he must be an encourager. He must be involved and he must be an encourager. So so helpful. Pastor Mark, a minute ago, you, you just mentioned something that I wanted to follow up on. You, you said, we're not going to get it right. We're not going to be able to, we, we, we can't cross every T and dot every I. We're not going to get it right as parents. Um, in, in those moments when when we fall short as parents, um, when we sin against our, our wives or we sin against our children or sin against our spouses, sin against our children, um, how, do, how do you seek forgiveness from your children? How do you model that, seek forgiveness from your spouse? Um, maybe just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, that's huge. And we don't <clears throat> say no, that we know we're not going to get it right. To be hopeless, we, we mm-hmm. strive to, but we're, mm-hmm. we know what the Scripture says, that we're not glorified yet. And so when we're realistic about our own uh, progress in even sanctification, we know we, we haven't arrived yet. And it starts with our heart. And so we, we may even know, wait, I wasn't really even desiring the right thing there. Or I was doing that for the wrong motives. And mm-hmm. so it may not just be some overt, clear, like, uh, word or phrase or tone or attitude it may be just the way we handled it uh from our hearts and motives and uh and recognizing that and and uh, you know there's not a day that goes by where that doesn't happen and so even in in correction of what was wrong it doesn't um our correction doesn't need to stop just because we need to correct ourselves too Mm -hmm. and so never let our sin be an excuse not to correct theirs but at the same time, admit ours and say, you know what, the way I handled that was wrong, or you know what, I, I'm I am right now getting angry. I'm being tempted to sin, or I'm I, I said this, or you know what, that was a sarcastic comment. It was not helpful. It was cutting in the midst of trying to make a point with you. And please forgive me. That was wrong. That was not helpful. That did not build you up. It was not gentle. Think about those see all those little phrases I just used are are pointing to real sins, yeah. pointing to actual commands of the scripture. Not mm-hmm. I hurt your feelings, but like I was not gentle. Mm-hmm. It was not helpful and like specifically naming that. Yeah, and so specifically naming the sin and naming naming it in a way that's biblical mm-hmm. uses the categories and in, in, in the words of scripture to say please and then I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I'm. That was not helpful, you know, and please forgive me. Transactionally ask for, for their forgiveness because we're teaching them to approach the throne of God and ask forgiveness yeah. ultimately, and that's what we want. And so we want to point them in that way. I think uh, along with that, um, many times we don't do the asking for forgiveness because we see that as a sign of weakness. Yeah, that's just... You know, just a Pride sign of weakness. Foolishness. It's going to reduce my authority yeah. and things like that. But but asking for forgiveness is a sign of humility, and humility is a sign of strength. You know, and 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 okay, how, how does it affect your authority? Well, then if you, like you were just saying, if you say, you know, I'm still needing to correct you, but it's because it's God's authority. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I am trying to do as much as I can to uphold God's authority here. And sometimes I don't do it right. Sometimes I'm wrong in how I handle it and everything, but God's authority is still God's authority. It's still the standard. And so we need to see, see this through in the, in the correction. And then another practical thing about that is, and I'm sure this has happened as well as you're both parenting and maybe one of them, one of the parents maybe is sinning, <laughs> you know, and then, and then the other parent notices it 
And so, and so you gotta be really careful on how you're gonna deal with that uh, because you don't want the children to see that one parent's pitted against the other in a sense. Right. And so sometimes what we've done is like one parent would say, honey, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> can we go to the other room and just talk to you real quick? And I'm serious, you know, we don't want to just hash it out there in front of them, you know? They're like, okay, what's happening here? And so we'll step away and say, you know, this or this or that. And then, and then, you know, we'll ask forgiveness and all that stuff. So that those are things that you just really need to be aware of, of things that could happen, you know? Yeah, or perhaps... You know what? We're we're all sitting right now. Yeah, so exactly. Why don't we just pray? Yeah, exactly. You know, let yeah. me just let me just stop and let's right. just pray. Right. Um, yep. Exactly. So I want to frame up a question that I thought a lot about as I've reflected on my my upbringing, and, and again by just by God's grace, there was this almost a, if I can just call it a certainty that I had as a, as a child, as a teenager, um, that I. That I couldn't, if I could put it this way, I couldn't out sin my parents' love, um, and, and there was a an approachability uh, I could come to them, come to you all with. And watching your family, Pastor Mark, I know that's that's the case here and in, in in your home as well. And maybe just launch a little, just briefly on that. Um, what is it that that you think helped cultivate that in your homes? Uh, that that sort of approachability. Maybe start with you. Yeah, there's several things that come to mind. Um, the, the greatest is the fact that a, a, a parent who's a sinner is raising a child who's a sinner. Mm. And so the parent needs to realize that he's a sinner. The whole Galatians 6-1 uh, thing, you know, where we, we need to realize that we are as capable of sinning as that child is. You know, and so, and, and God, in his absolute grace and mercy, has forgiven us and has loved us. And so who are we not to love them and um, forgive, forgive our children? That's, that's one thing. Another thing that, that, that really is in my heart in that, in that kind of situation is the fact that I want, communication and closeness in with my children if 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 i give them the shock effect of a sin that they've they've committed they're going to say oh okay i see how this goes so i'll i'll tell dad that you know the little sins that maybe you know i sprayed somebody else's car while i was washing it and that's as far as i'm going to go the big sins i'm there's no way i'm going to come to my dad for mm -hmm. i don't want that i want right. there to be accessibility you know, and so, so when good. when they come to me and and they said that I you know something something big's happened, you know I want to be able to say okay, that that is that is big, there's consequences, big consequences on that, and uh, the Lord has a lot to say about that, and that sin we're not we're not diminishing the sinfulness of it, but we we deal with it. But I also want them to know that there is absolutely no sin that does not have hope also after it with repentance and being um, you know, tied to the sufficiency of Scripture. And so I want them to know that. They're, you know, I, I sin, they sin, you know, and I want that accessibility. I want them to be able to call. Even I want them to be able to do that even when they're away from home. In other words, when, when they've already left home. Yeah. You know, they want to say, you know, I can talk to my dad about this. Right. You know, and I know that I'm not going to get a, a my, my, the, the phone's not going to hang up or whatever, you know, and stuff like that. So I think those things are things that are really key. Yeah, I mean, it goes to what it means to be adopted into the family mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and knowing mm -hmm. that relationship with the Lord. And um, mm -hmm. and so, like, they're mine. Yeah. And God has given them to me. That's right. And that's a gift to me to prize forever and enjoy. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, that... and. Uh, you know, my kids know, I tell them that every day, you know, yeah. I love you. And, and, um, you know, would repeat that mm -hmm. gladly mm -hmm. all day long. Yeah. Right. And, and so for them to know that and, mm -hmm. uh, to know that every time that they're sinning, that, you know, seek forgiveness and I forgive you, I love you mm -hmm. and I want what's best for you. And so that those words of restoration 
and caring, love, affection, of restoration, mm-hmm. just to be a part of that. But that's that's vital to them knowing that. And, mm-hmm. you know, ultimately, and that's for all of us, uh, you know, especially even anybody listening, like that's that's what that's what we want to model as parents. That's what we want to know in relationship with our Heavenly Father. And, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know, know what that looks like, don't, mm. don't have that security, don't feel that. And to know that, that the love of God in Christ is that you look at your Heavenly Father mm. and He is yeah. on the holy throne of the universe and He is yeah. ruling yeah. and He is absolutely sinless mm-hmm. and in, in an in unapproachable light and you yeah. have sinned against Him mm-hmm. and, and He comes to you and gives you Christ, mm-hmm. washes you clean, completely robes you in Christ's righteousness and says, look at me, mm-hmm. look up here. Mm-hmm. I love you, I forgive you. Now exactly. you come here yeah. to this throne and you come here regularly. Right, exactly. And I'm <laughs> commanding you to do that because you need it and because I want you to. Yeah. Come with confidence. Yeah. And so we want that relationship modeled by us as parents we want them to have that, like you're saying, that accessibility, because we want that accessibility with our Father exactly. in heaven. Exactly. And and so that just drives how we ought to think about reconciliation and and uh, forgiveness. There's a there's a a generational implication on this. You know, I I, I want to approach them like that because I would want them to approach their future children, my my children's future children. In the same way, because you're going to be more permissive with your grandchildren, yeah. <laughs> so you really That's need right. them to be <laughs> them to handle this right. You know, I remember uh, when when uh, Dr. Bruce Ware came and was uh, did a conference at our church a while back, and something he said that just gripped my heart. And he said, I-, "I wanted to to live my life in such a way that my kids knew I loved spending time with them." Mm-hmm. And that just really stuck out to me. Yeah. And I've I've by God's grace, I'm I'm trying to. To, to live that out and so helpful. Um, and I've heard you say, Pastor Mark, as well, something that's, that's extremely helpful, that as parents, what, we, what we're striving after is influence, not control. Mm-hmm. Influence, not control. And I think even just thinking of, about parenting through that lens, I want to be so useful to God in influencing spiritually this young soul. I'm not, it's not about control. It's not about you need to do these things that I want you to do. It's about I want to impact your spiritual well-being. And so, brothers, thank you so much for taking some time to talk about this important subject that's on our hearts. We've run out of time, but just appreciate your wisdom, your years of faithfulness, and all glory be to Christ. (music) 